Hello, I'm Josh Carr. Today I wanted to clear up something that I've gotten a couple questions about that people seem to be confused on. So I've gone through how to use an XLOOKUP before, and I've said, hey, if you have something like rent, expenses, income, and you're like January, February, March, you could do an XLOOKUP. And your standard XLOOKUP just says, I'm looking for a thing, the blue cell, I'm looking for it in the red area, and the answers are on the purple area. And if I do that uh, for rent or for expenses or for income, in all cases, it just pulls the line in question. And, you know, it works the way it's supposed to work. You know, rent, expenses, income. There's also this other function called filter. Now, on its most basic level, filter does exactly what XLOOKUP does. It says, again, the answers are in the blue area. But the syntax is a little different. And then it says, look at the red area. And when the red area is equal to the thing you're looking for, like, say, rent or expenses or income, it pulls the information over. So at first glance, it would seem that whether or not you do an X lookup or you do a filter, it does the exact same thing. So how are they different? They're different in one core way. With an X lookup, you're looking for one item. With a filter, you're looking for all items that meet a set of rules. So like with an X lookup, you're saying, look for the word rent in the red area. But over here on filter, you're saying, give me all the red things that equal rent. Now that seems the same, but it's not. That is to say, X lookup looks for one thing, filter looks for multiple instances of things. For example, this is what you could do with a filter that you can't do with an X lookup. You could say, I've got some apartments in a building, 1A, 1B, 1C. And there's some bedrooms. This is a one bedroom apartment. This is a two bedroom apartment. You get the idea. And I've got some rents. If I do filter, I could say, the answers are in blue. Look at the red. Where does the red equal the number of bedrooms? And then in this case, it gives me all four instances of where the one-bedroom apartments exist and what the rents are. And then once I filtered that, that is a dynamic array. It's a collection of cells starting from a set point. And I could refer to the average of that dynamic array. You'll notice that I put it in as C29 pound. That's a way of saying start at C29 and go until you're out of space. Or I could do the sum. Or in the same way, I could be like, what if there are two bedrooms? And then I'd get three items. And then same filter. And same average function. And same fun sum function. And obviously, I could have put the filter inside of the average. But here, I just broke it out to just make it easier to read. Long story short, as I wrote here, if you're looking for one thing, use XLOOKUP. If you're looking for multiple instances of a thing, use filter. And well, there you go. Hopefully that's helpful. And uh, as I always like to say, until I see you again, keep building better models.